Rushing through the darkness, a woman frantically shuts and locks her apartment door. Panting and scared, she peeks out the peephole but sees nothing, just some flickering lights. She tries turning on the lights in her units no avail. Suddenly the microwave turns on. The woman can only stare at it until the timer dinging makes her jump. As she stares, the fridge opens, and a wet hand emerges. A woman in a red dress slowly crawls toward the frightened woman. The woman screams when the ghost looks up with its dilated red orbs. Miko Yotsuya is busy with her phone when she returns to watch the horror show. She's too busy texting to watch though. Miko's brother, Kyosuke, comes out of the shower and informs Miko that the shower's clogged again. It's not from Miko's hair too. Hmm, weird. Kyosuke then joins Miruko on the couch, excited about the show. They're busy with their own stuff that they don't notice the fridge opening. The next day, Miko is about to start getting ready for school when she hears a noise from outside. When she peeks through her window, Miko sees an old lady trying to get her dog away from the garbage dump. The dog's incessantly barking at that spot, as if there's something or someone there. She proceeds to brush her teeth, staring at her reflection, when Miko notices a handprint in the mirror. Miko doesn't give it any thought and wipes it off. Before leaving, Miko's mom, Toko, asks Miko if she brought an umbrella with her. Kyosuke tells her the weather forecast says it will rain. If it does, Miko will just buy one at the store. When Miko goes out the door, her father, Mamoru, comes out. At school, Hana Yurikawa, Miko's hyperactive and jolly friend, greets her good morning. Hana then spots Miko's keychain, which Miko bought from the recent vile van. Hana has one too. But instead of meme shine, Hana is Lamb Rabbit. Miko notes how Hannah perfectly copied the keychain's face, adding how Lamb Rabbit goods are often exclusive and sold out. Yet Hannah's room is filled with its dolls. The friend's conversation is cut short when Yuria Negredu, a schoolmate, tells them off for being in the way. Immediately pulling Hannah away, Miko stares at Yuria, who stops in her tracks to turn to Miko. Yuria mutters, You see? As if she's pointing a fact at. But then Yuria just heeds it no mind and leaves, confusing Miko and Hannah. During class, Miko just stares outside the room. She spots a rolling ball on the field. Miko's wandering eyes are cut short when her teacher calls her to read a passage in the book. As she starts reading, the ball slowly moves. It's finally lunch break, and Hannah is famished even though she just ate bread. Miko calls this Hannah's endless appetite. Sharing how she wakes up hungry lately, Hannah's been unusually up every 3 a.m., totally different from midnight cravings. Not only do her cravings spike, but her clock also stops. The lamp turns off a lot. Is the whole house hungry? As Miko opens up her bread, she suddenly looks towards the classroom door, as if she feels something watching her. She shrugs this off and sees a big bite on her bread, courtesy of Hannah. Miko then takes a bathroom break. She gets startled when she hears a loud thud coming from the next cubicle. Weird. Isn't she all alone right now? Finishing her biz, Miko comes out and notices the stall next to hers is actually occupied. After class, the two friends talk about going shopping for undies. When Hannah heads home first, Miko realizes that her keychain's missing. She decides to backtrack her steps, leading her back to their classroom. It's already getting dark, so Miko needs to find her keychain ASAP. She flicks the lights on, but after a few seconds, flicks it off again, then on again. It doesn't take Miko that long to find her keychain. It's just under the teacher's table. Miko finally fishes out her keychain. Wait, what was that? Was that a shadow passing through the dark corridors? Now, Miko didn't see it, but we sure did. Standing up, Miko heads toward the door, only to stop and look at the dark hallway. The lights inside the classroom start to flicker. If that wasn't bad luck enough, rain pours down on Miko. It's been a terrible day. Well, her mom and brother did tell her to bring an umbrella. All drenched now, Miko fishes out her phone to see when the next bus arrives. She sends a text reply to Hannah, saying she dropped something and got drenched. Miko then snaps a selfie for Hannah. Unusual enough, Hannah replies with a picture of Miko's selfie. Miko receives the same photo once more when a voice says, Sorry, I can't really hear you. The prompt keeps repeating. While Miko receives a spam of the same selfie, her phone's been buzzing from all the spam selfies, then all of a sudden, Miko's selfie distorts and morphs into that of a dead woman. Miko quickly drops her phone, panting from the shock. What was that? Looking at her phone then at the streets, Miko ensures she's the only one there. And she is. Finally calming down, Miko picks up her phone and sees it's all back to normal. Hannah also replies, asking if she should bring Miko an umbrella. Maybe it was just a glitch. Chuckling, Miko convinces herself she's just tired. No biggie. She gently rubs her eyes and looks up, only to see a grotesque figure right at her face. A ghost? It's taunting Miko, asking if she could see it. Although she's clearly terrified, Miko tries her very best to calm down and ignore the ghost. 
She quickly looks around, quipping how the bus is late. The ghost is adamant though, and continues to pester Miko with the same question. Can you see me? It even draws nearer to Miko's face. Good thing Miko's quick enough to think of an escape, immediately replying to Hannah's text. The ghost stares at Miko for a long while before deciding to leave since Miko couldn't see it. As soon as the ghost disappears into thin air, tears start to form in Miko's eyes. That was scary. She saw it clearly with her own two eyes. Tonight won't be fun since Miko comes home to an empty house. Her mom only left a note saying she'll be home late and that Kyosuke is sleeping over at a friend's house. It's gonna be a long night. Brushing her teeth, Miko thinks about what just happened. It's been that terrible. She might have nightmares later. Her thoughts are interrupted when she spots a handprint in the mirror. Again. Didn't she wipe it off already? Like this morning, Miko just wipes it off, thinking it might be Kyosuke's. Ah, uh, blaming the baby brother. A classic. Still deep in thought, Miko wants to go to bed early. Unfortunately, another uninvited guest interrupts her internal monologue. Standing behind Miko is a ghost, slamming his hand in the mirror. It twists its neck so it can stare at Miko. Like the ghost from earlier, it asks Miko if she can see him. Miko faints, having her eyes hurt, quickly washing her face again. While doing this, she expresses her fear. She tells herself to calm down so she won't react to the ghost. Relax, it'll be fine. In horror movies, the next time the MCs look, the ghosts disappear, right? Eh, uh, no. It's still there, Miko. Like it's playing a twister game of some sort. With its hand in both sides of the mirror and body behind Miko, she's all trapped now. She continues to ignore the ghost and is now looking for salt. She places a big bowl of salt near her mirror. Apparently, salt helps purify the place and wards off evil spirits and lost ghosts. Even if she sees it, Miko will have to try and ignore the ghosts until they disappear. It seems the spirits in the bathroom are still there too. Hopefully, it stays there until morning. Sighing, Miko gets comfy in her bed, immediately taking out her phone to search for exorcism goods such as prayer beads. About to doze off, she notices that her amount of salt has been tampered with. Miko might be too sleepy to think much of it, so of course she just turns and sleeps. She doesn't even get a minute in when something is bugging her from under her blanket. And you know what she does next. Bingo. She looks into it, and voila. Another ghost now wants to cuddle with her. It even calls her mama as it lays on top of Miko. Like every other ghost, Miko pretends she doesn't see them. The salt did nothing at all. Maybe those prayer beads are worth a shot. The next morning, Miko jolts awake and immediately checks into her blanket. Seeing nothing, she sighs in relief. Even the ghost in the bathroom is gone too, and the one at the bus stop. It seems like coast is clear. Walking through the hallway, she wonders why it was only yesterday that she could see ghosts. Exhaustion? Air pressure? While Miko's lost in her thoughts, Hannah greets her from behind, startling her. Because of yesterday's events, Miko's anxiety levels are still through the roof. Thwarting her words from earlier, a ghost suddenly appears on the windows, like it's walking around the building. She then asks Hannah if they're on the third floor, and Hannah confirms this. Miko just tells Hannah that maybe she's just seeing things. This catches the ghost's attention and it beelines for Miko. The ghost straight on stares at her, greeting her good morning. It starts calling Miko teacher, probably a spirit of a student. As the ghost draws nearer, one thought evades Miko's mind. She really can see ghosts. The ghost doesn't just stop there. It breathes foul air toward Miko. It repeats its greeting as it goes face to face with her. Clenching her skirt, Miko's internally screaming all her fear right now. In Hannah's POV, Miko just blatantly staring at her. Hannah doesn't know the dilemma Miko's in right now. With the ghost blocking Hannah, Miko can't even reply to her friend. Luckily, the ghost gives up on harassing Miko, thinking Miko doesn't see it at all. Ghost free, Miko faces Hannah, who asks her if Miko wants to ask her out. With her usual blank expression, Miko could only think of one reply. As if. Sorry, Hannah. In the locker room, the girls are talking about shows about scary stories. They're even talking about the fridge scene from earlier, mentioning a severed head in the locker. Hannah halts changing her clothes and complains about that scene being allowed on TV. Hannah's not just into horror stuff and Miko knows it. Hannah continues to share how she cuffed up all the borscht she ate for dinner just because she saw a scary scene on TV. That's when Miko realizes she can't confide in her about the creepy stuff she's been seeing, especially that Hannah's wailing right now, pleading with Miko to open her locker, scared there might be a severed head in it. Miko doesn't have a choice but to do it. It's just a TV show, right? Surely nothing's inside this locker. Relief washes through Miko as there's nothing in the locker at all. Except when she looks up, there it is. The severed head everyone's been talking about. 
Miko just turns away, telling Hannah to get dressed up. Hannah then quips about how cliché horror shows work. You know, the MC opens the door, sees nothing, and is relieved but then MC turns around, and the ghost has been right behind MC all along. Hannah's words aren't helping Miko's sanity right now. Hannah tries to reach for her phone but can't get it. I don't know who puts their phone in the top shelf though. Anyways, Hannah asks Miko to get it for her. It would have been a simple task, but the ghost is up there, remember? And its head is sitting prettily next to Hannah's phone too. Agreeing, Miko gives herself a pep talk. As long as she pretends not to see it, it'll be fine. As soon as she has the phone in her hand, the ghost suddenly screams at Miko. The poor girl has to bite her lip just to pretend that the jump scare didn't affect her. Miko hands the phone to Hannah, closes the locker, turns away, and immediately falls to the ground. It's getting harder and harder for Miko to ignore these ghosts. The two friends get back to the classroom, with Hannah facing a slight breeze down south. It seems the girl took off her underwear when she was changing earlier. These two friends are the polar opposites of each other, but Miko's happy to have Hannah to keep her distracted from her newly found ability. There are a lot more ghosts at school too. Miko's comforted by the fact that they won't harm her. That is if she stays consistent in feigning ignorance. When Hannah asks if Miko could accompany her to the lockers, Miko flat out says no freaking way. Hannah will have to go commando for now. Hannah sits down and pulls out a book from under her desk. Look what we have here. It seems like the thing has a 20 in this anime. The only difference is that this hand is a perv. It morphs so it can wrap itself around Hannah's body. Oh, the look of horror on Miko's face. Hannah doesn't seem to feel anything from the ghost's comfy embrace and just continues to talk to Miko about food. Not like Miko could ignore such touchy hands in her BFF. Acting like she's dizzy, Miko gets up to push Hannah's desk away. She quickly asks Hannah to go with her to the clinic, but then the ghost starts going cray cray. It has feet now and is wriggling around like it wants to come out. Miko takes Hannah's hand so they can run out of the classroom. Are they safe? Nope. When Miko turns around, the ghost clings to Hannah's back. Ah yes, piggyback rides are fun. Arriving at the clinic, Miko just wants to go back and think of a way to get rid of this freeloader in Hannah's back, but Hannah's adamant about staying to wait for the doctor, worried about Miko's anemia. Hannah plays around with a stethoscope, wanting to hear her heartbeat. Sighing, Miko doesn't have time to mess about right now. Spotting an alcohol bottle nearby, Miko gets a brilliant idea. She asks Hannah to disinfect herself, since stethoscopes have plenty of bacteria from all the sick students that visit the clinic. It doesn't take Hannah much convincing as she lays out her hands. Miko, on the other hand, isn't sure if this will work. Better than nothing, right? Instead of spraying alcohol on Hannah's hands, Miko aims for Hannah's gifted chest area. Miko's constant alcohol attack has Hannah's uniform getting wet to the point that her underwear is peeking through. The ghost's hands around Hannah's melons start quivering, and soon all of its body parts start thrashing around. Please work. Peekaboo, says the ghost's head popping out from Hannah's back. What else could go worse than this? I shouldn't have said that. Hannah now wants to do a checkup on Miko, with a ghost riding on Hannah's back. No, thank you. Backing away, Miko has nowhere to go as Hannah closes in on her. The ghost's head starts naking towards Miko's face. Its hands start moving in on Miko's chest as well. Having no choice, Miko just closes her eyes and takes Hannah's checkup without fuss. Their little playtime's interrupted when the school nurse, Hito, arrives and informs the girls that classes have started. With Hannah's hands underneath Miko's shirt, well, very compromising indeed. While telling the girls to return to class, the ghost finally detaches itself from Hannah and then transfers to Kido. I guess this one has eyes on whoever has it bigger. Sorry, Miko. Looks like you're on the losing end on this one. After class, Miko and Hannah head off to the donut shop, which is crowded because of their promo. They bump into Yuria too, but Yuria only stares at them for a few seconds before leaving. Wanting to forget the spooky stuff at school, Miko falls in line and looks at the menu on her phone. She scrolls through it when she stumbles upon the Nam and Dabu ring, a prayer bead donut. Hannah calls her name and asks her why she's on the other side alone. Miko's heartbeat rings through her ears as she looks at the very obvious and alive line. Miko got in the wrong line. It's not looking good for her when the ghost in front turns to look at Miko. Every other spirit behind her has eyes on Miko now. Why are all these ghosts lining up anyways? What's the line for? Before Miko can find out, Hannah's grip on her arm snaps her out of her thoughts. Hannah immediately takes Miko to the right line. Hannah reprimands her friend for being too preoccupied with her phone. Miko could have gotten seriously hurt. Oh Hannah, being physically hurt isn't Miko's number one problem right now. Looking at the ghosts lining up, Miko ultimately finds out why they're there. A huge spirit devours the ones lining up. 
Uh, correction, it's some monster at this point now. Seeing the monster happily munching on a ghost has Miko thanking Hannah for saving her. That could have been Miko being monster food. As the girls head home with their donuts, they find a stray kitty in a box. Ah, it sure is a breath of fresh air to see something cute after the horrific stuff Miko expe- Oh, forget what I said. These ghosts are just everywhere. One's all cramped up inside the box with a kin. Hannah takes the kin into her arms, deciding to keep it. The ghost seems to want to go with Hannah, too. All Miko can do is smile the fear away. With the kin in hand, the ghost follows the girls. Is it haunting the kin? Hannah's swinging the kitten around, so Mika warns her to be careful. Right then, Hannah bumps into a scary-looking guy with scars on his face. Seeing the guy's face, Hannah apologizes and returns to her seat. Another guy, who looks all smart and friendly, approaches the girls. Since Hannah posted the stray kitten online, the guy wants to adopt it. Miko stands up and straight up refuses to let the guy take the kitten home. Because of Miko's third eye, she can clearly see all the angry cat souls haunting this guy. Even the ghost stalking the girls doesn't approve of the guy, screaming at the guy's face. The guy wonders why Miko won't let him have the kitten, but eventually leaves. He does, however, get the ghost to follow him. It's a win-win. The scarred guy is still standing nearby and looking at the girls. Taking the kitten out of Hannah's arms, Miko hands it to the guy. Unlike the nice-looking dude, the guy has two angelic cat souls surrounding him, giving the impression that he'll be good to the kitten. You win some, you lose some. As horrific as Miko's powers can be, they're pretty freaking cool if you give them a shot. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.